Hey there, uh, I'm Jeff Taylor. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Um, usually you'll find me on this channel doing uh, CSS pictures or animation or, I don't know, something creative. Um, uh, but today I'm going to uh, do a little DevOpsy work, um, developer operations, uh, or DevOps for short. Um, we're going to set up a Kubernetes cluster and then deploy an application container to that cluster. Um, what am I talking about? Well, that's a great question. Um, you can Google this uh, or go to Kubernetes.io. It's um, an open source kind of uh, project or, I don't know, platform, container orchestration platform uh, made by Google. Um, and what this allows uh, me to do is, is run this cluster. It's running on one or more machines and then allow me to uh, take Docker containers, uh, which I can run locally or run in the cloud. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, we can talk about those in a second. Um, but once I'm done with a Docker container, I can just kind of toss it into this cluster and it runs my website or my web application or whatever. Um, and then I'll show you how to um, route DNSs to particular containers. So you can go to you know mywebsite.com and it'll hit an application container in Kubernetes. Um, I use this uh, at work and in, in my personal projects as well because I find it's very easy to, to do some work on my machine and then toss it up to the production servers and it just kind of work. Um, it's easy to upgrade and downgrade and scale and change and manage. Um, so I like it a lot. Um, setting it up isn't that hard. Uh, it's a little scary at first, but it's not that hard. So I thought I'd make a video or two or three or four, however many it takes to um, set it up and, and kind of show you. Uh, how I do this. I've done this on uh, the Google, Google Cloud Platform. I've also done it on AWS. Um, for a while there, I was running on the Google Cloud Platform. I actually still have a Kubernetes cluster over there that's running um, a couple of projects. Uh, but today, I'm going to show you how to do an Amazon. Um, Amazon Web Services is a little uh, steep learning curve. Uh, you got to learn a lot of products. Um, and that's, I don't know, I just kind of have to kind of take the educational hit. Um, but uh, when you're learning AWS, there's, there's so many things to learn, um, and there's so many different names for them. Uh, there's S3 and ECR and EC2, um, ELBs, uh, Route 53, we're going to use all these things. So it, it's a little overwhelming, but uh, bear with me. They all kind of work together, um, and you can learn it pretty quickly. Uh, so by the end of this, um, I don't know, video or series of videos, what we're going to do is I have this uh, domain here, rightside.studio, which is a little uh, little project I'm going to be starting. Um, but as you can see, it's not serving any web traffic. I own the domain, but um, the DNSs aren't pointing to anywhere. So at the end of this, what we're going to do is uh, set up a cluster, uh, deploy an application container to that cluster, and have that single application container, or maybe multiple application containers, who knows, uh, respond to traffic when I hit rightside.studio. Um, once I have the cluster, I'll be able to uh, deploy many, many, many projects to this cluster. Um, and I'll have to think about infrastructure and I'll have to think about making new servers or whatever. Um, and then I can just point different DNSs to different um, different containers. Uh, Kubernetes does a lot more than that. Um, it's, it's pretty wild. It, it runs <laughs> lots of enterprise and large companies uh, these days doing production workloads and um, load balancing and uh, doing a multi, um, uh, like, da data center um, application scaling. Uh, we're not going to do any of that, um, although we could. Uh, I could put Brightside Studio in a East Coast data center or a West Coast data center, and it'd be great, and I could manage it from one cluster. Um, that's out of the scope of this video. I just want to make clusters so I can deploy containers very easily. I think this is an easy way to do it. So without further ado, let's get started. I have some links up here that uh, we will go through. Um, but the first one is uh, this Amazon um, article that's written fairly recently. It's I'm recording this in September. Um, and this was written in July of 2017, so just a couple months ago. There are some things out of date. Uh, that's kind of why I want to make this video. You can't just follow this guide and it works. Uh, it's kind of frustrating. So uh, just bear with me. Um, here's a link. I'll, I'll post it below. So the first thing we need to do is um, install a couple things on our machine. Um, the, the two we need are K-Ops or COPS. 
uh, which is a just kind of a tool. I think it stands for Kubernetes operations. I could be wrong, um, but KOps, that's what I think about. Um, Kubernetes operations that we'll use this really once or twice to spin up the cluster. Um, then we won't really need it anymore. We could use it to um, upgrade our cluster as well, but we're going to just write a couple commands to get the cluster up and going. And then kubectl or kube control um, is what we're going to use to actually interact with the cluster. Uh, we're going to be using this a lot. So uh, what you got to do first is install um, COPS or Kubernetes operations and then the kubectl. So we'll do this first. Um, and COPS is actually already on my machine, but you just run this command. Great. Um, and then what you want to do is actually install the kubectl, which um, I will just follow these links here. This will go to the GitHub page. And this will say install kubectl. And this will take us to the Kubernetes page. And it has a couple different instructions on how to install it on different platforms. I have this link up in here. So if you scroll up um, or down, whatever, uh, I'm, you can install it. I'm running on Mac OS. Um, and you can install it via Homebrew, just like we installed the uh, COPS. Great, so I already have that, and um, I'm just going to run a kubectl version to make sure I have it installed. And I do, great. Um, so you'll see it prints out two versions, the client, uh, which is on my machine, and then the server. Um, I'm already connected to a server. Uh, you might not get this if you're not connected, if you're doing this for the first time. Don't worry about it. This is what's important. This is the client, and I have 1.7. Cool, so um, now I have those both on my machine. Uh, now what we need to do before we create the cluster is create um, a little bit of uh, configuration. And this is kind of the first like AWS like learning curve, like, oh my gosh, I just want to make a, a Kubernetes cluster, and now i got to do this other thing. It's this other product called S3. Um, it's cool. Uh, bear with me. Um, what we got to do is store some configuration in the cloud. Um, and this is basically a, a set of configurations so that uh, the cluster can, can, can spin up. So what it has us do is create an S3 bucket, which is really just a place to put files, um, and we have to give it a name. Um, this one won't actually work uh, because this guy's out of date, so I'll explain that in a second. So um, what we need to do is, um, oh, I already have the AWS CLI installed. Uh, when you register your AWS account, which you'll need, um, I'm not going to go over that in this video, um, you can just download the CLI, it's, it's no big deal. So uh, what we're going to do is um, create a bucket. And uh, the bucket, uh, you should probably name um, what your cluster is going to be called. Uh, it's kind of odd. Oh, you can't see this. My face is in the way. There you go. Uh, maybe I should move my face over here. Or maybe I should just, I know what I'm going to do. There you go. Now you can see my terminal. OK, cool. Um, okay, where were we? Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to make a cluster and, um, sorry, we're going to make a bucket. And what they suggest you do is name your bucket kind of uh, what your cluster is going to be named or addressable at. Uh, it has to be a real DNS, it has to be a real domain. Um, and they say you have to do that so you don't get confused because uh, your cluster is going to be um, accessible. Um, maybe not by everybody, but somebody, so it needs an internet address, and they don't just issue out IPs anymore, or they do, uh, but they want it to be masked by a DNS so you know what you're talking to. Because uh, people like me, I deal with uh, a couple clusters at a time, um, different projects, different companies that I'm working for, and if it was just a bunch of IPs, I'd get confused which one I'm connected to or which one I'm talking to, so they make you actually name it. Um, so uh, if I were doing this for real, I would probably call this cluster, dot right side of studio or maybe um, K8s or Kubernetes, uh, Kub I got to spell that right, Kubernetes dot right side of studio or a lot of people call Kubernetes K8s, uh, whatever you want to do, um, but I'm going to call it testing because I'm just testing. <laughs> and this uh, breaks, so uh, we're just following this guide here and it's like, oh, I'll make one. 
um, and this breaks. And the reason it breaks is uh, this guide is actually wrong and well, not wrong, but out of date, and it wants us to give it a location constraint, uh, meaning it, what data center do we want to make this um, bucket in. So uh, you have to give it a create bucket configuration space location constraint and give it a, um, a data center. Um, if you don't know what data center you need, you can go to this website here. And here are the, uh, the places for S3, and I am closest to the Ohio data center, so I'm going to give it US East, excuse me, US East 2. Um, and you can kind of see here, this is the location constraint here. Um, if you are not uh, near Ohio, you can pick something else. Um, these are the location constraints. Uh, but I'm going to pick US East 2. So now this will work. So this is the first change, or this is the first difference um, from this guide that we're following. Okay, uh, once we do that, it says this guy strongly recommends that you version your bucket, which I think is a good idea. Um, it'll basically this will do some change tracking uh, for us. So I am going to update my bucket to be able to do that. And my bucket is named testing.writeside.studio. Cool. And then it's um, asking me to uh, just set an environment variable, and I will do that. So I believe this will be testing up right side of studio as well. Cool. Um, so that's it for the um, S3 configuration. So now we have an empty bucket just chilling out there. Um, that COPS is going to use later um, to put in some, some configuration and some state info about uh, our cluster. Um, the next part is we have to figure some DNS. So as I told you, your cluster um, needs a real DNS uh, to, for us to be able to talk to it. Um, so let's configure that in Route 53 now.